from the heart of Meridian Township and Home TV Studio J, it's Home Entertainment. With special guests, author Lev Raphael, Bob Hoffman from the Wharton Center, and the music of After We Fall. And now, here's your host, Brian Dumont. Thank you, Rachel. Welcome to another episode of Home Entertainment. We do have a great show lined up for you, and I'm excited to have you back with us once again, Rachel. It's actually the start of a new semester for us here at Home TV. We just welcomed in a brand new group of rookie interns. Fresh meat, as we like to call them. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, Rachel, you've been here quite a while now. You're one of our longest running interns, aren't you? Um, I've almost been here at the end of summer. It'll be two years. Two so, years. Yeah. What's it like for you seeing uh, the new rookies come in and kind of feeling things out for the first time? You know, you really sympathize for them. You were there. You know exactly what they're going through. They're, you just, I feel like I always try to give them some advice, try to get them through it. What kind the of advice do you give them? Um, basically, I mean, with their news story, the different news stories that they do, mm -hmm. I always try to tell them, like, people they can get in contact with, just simple things like that, and just things how to not get in trouble, and just advice <laughs> on, you know, just try to give them the 411 and try to get them by the, the whole year. And if so. you work hard and don't quit, someday you can be just like Rachel. <laughs> Well, we've got actually a busy show coming up for you tonight. A little bit later, we're going to talk to Bob from the Wharton Center. We've got an awesome band called After We Fall coming up. But first, we're going to bring out our first author. He's actually a local author. He's from the Okemos area, and we're going to welcome him right now. Please welcome Lev Raphael. Hi, Brian. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you for coming on. Have a seat. I'm uh, very excited to hear that you're from the Okemos area. I was reading about your book, and... You're kind of world traveled almost, and you're right here in our backyard. That's right. So it wasn't much of a trip to get here. Well, I saw that you were from New York originally, right? Yeah, I got over it. <laughs> when did you come to Okemos? Uh, I came here uh, about uh, 25 plus years ago to do a PhD in Michigan okay. at Michigan State, and I stayed on to teach for a while, and then I um, escaped the university to write full time. And that's, you know, honestly, I'll, I've thought about the idea of someday somewhere just going off to the middle of the woods and becoming an author myself. Are you kind of, is that what you do? You well, I actually, I or? dream of uh, going off to the woods and becoming a TV interviewer someday. <laughs> so maybe we could switch careers. Yeah, yeah I would. How would I, that I don't be? know how well TV studios work in the woods, but sure, whatever. Uh, Reception would be poor. I suppose. Um, well, the, your newest book is called My Germany, and this is your 19th book? Is 19th that what I read? book, right. Why did you decide to write this book at this time? Well, it sort of picked me. Uh, okay. I had a German publisher uh, tran uh, buy three of my books for translation into German, mm -hmm. and they sent me on two book tours, and because I'm a child of Holocaust survivors, being in Germany was really uh, strange and exciting, and I thought I had to write a book about it, and I did. I, I can imagine it would be a unique experience. Now, um, what, what's it like? Let's start with, uh, I know you've had a, a lot of different styles of books. You've had some mysteries and some nonfiction. And Psychology, this, right, in a children's book, too. So it, your, your style is very diverse. Um, when you write something like this that's nonfiction, it's almost, is this almost autobiographical for you? Oh yeah, it's a, really a memoir mm -hmm. and a mystery and a travelogue all combined. So how, it's three different forms. How do you do that? How do you get so personal with your own experiences? I mean, it, you almost have to be pretty vulnerable, I would think. Oh yeah, you have to be. I mean, you can't be, do a memoir without yeah. being open to people. And, but I'm used to it because I've been a uh, published author for 20 years and okay. I speak about my work and I've done so on three different continents and people ask really personal questions. So I'm pretty used to almost anything people can throw at me. And obviously Germany today is a lot different than it was yes, 50 that's years one ago thing or, I found out. or even 20 years ago, yep. you know. Yep, it's How? a very different country and, and I found people very welcoming and I just was fascinated by it. I grew up with Germany as a taboo kind of radioactive yeah. idea, not even a country but an idea, sort of the Death Star, sure. you know. And uh, Luke Skywalker is not going to the uh, Death Star for spring break, but in effect that's what I did. I, mean, I was on a pleasure tour because uh -huh. even though uh, uh, um, a book tour is work, it's also a lot of fun. I mean, you get to, to go to really cool places and people treat you very, very well, especially in Germany. They serve sparkling wine at the readings, that's nice. the bookstore readings. And you, um, you're treated there differently than authors here. They treat you as a uh, cultural figure, as an artist. Okay. So they really respect what you have to say and really want to know what you say and sometimes they ask really tough questions. I was in Göttingen, which is a university town, mm -hmm. and so they all 
deep thinkers. And the first question was so deep, I didn't get it even in English. I mean, it was asked in German, translated, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And I said, you know, let me warm up a little before you go into <laughs> metaphysics. Do you think, oh, let me ask you this. I heard a, uh, a quote one time, I'm not sure where it came from, but it's, you're probably familiar with it. If, it says, if, we're, uh, if we don't learn from history, we're destined to repeat it. That's right. Uh, and do you, I, do you th I've seen some places where that has worked, I think, and other places where it hasn't worked as well yet. Where do you think we are? Oh, as, as a human race, I'm, I'm sometimes, depending on the day in the news, sometimes I'm really optimistic about what we're doing. You know, I'm glad that the country, uh, that our new president is, is uh, declared that we're, uh, has really changed our position on torture. Uh, and then you hear news about uh, massacres or genocide in the Sudan or, and elsewhere, and you think, well, why isn't the world doing more? So it's, it's some days the gl glass is half empty, some mm -hmm. it's half full. Uh, but for me, my, my book was about my personal journey as a child of Holocaust survivors, confronting the past, learning about my parents' past, and, and uh, understanding what Germany has meant to me both as a, an idea and a reality over the decades. We had the Holocaust Remembrance Day just right, recently. Right. What does that uh, type of holiday signify for you? Well, you know, I don't need the, a, a Remembrance Day because for me it's something that I'll always live with. I'll always live with the knowledge that not only were my parents Holocaust survivors, which you have to look at as that means somebody tried to kill them. Right and they escaped, they survived. But that dozens of relatives on either side of the family were, were in fact murdered by the Nazis. And you know, I grew up with no past, no past, no family connections, all the things that people take for granted, uh, family photos, mementos from the old world, nothing. You know, there was nothing in our house before that was older than 1950. So, and that was all just bought here. So my parents came here with nothing. And, um, you know, that's a lot for a little kid to grow up with. So yeah. I've been trying to figure out what that means most of my life. Do you think that gives um, children of Holocaust survivors? Because the Holocaust survivors, that generation's on its they're way passing. out. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're they're, they're in their out. late 80s and 90s. The youngest ones are in their 70s. They're people who were kids during okay. the Holocaust. What do you think that's going to mean for the generation to come when suddenly that generation is completely gone? Well, I think it's more incumbent on them to keep the memory alive in one way or another, and that's partly why some of us write, some of us teach, uh, some of us, are, many of us, I think, are in the helping professions in psychology and things like that. Uh, and then it's and then it's the generation after. I mean, it's the same with any tragedy that happens uh, and disaster. In a different perspective, I think we will we are just starting to see people write and do films about the uh, Katrina disaster disaster and that those people will be talking about what happened to them for a long time and when they're gone their children will be talking about it so every you know unfortunately there's no shortage of disaster and massacre uh, in the world but also there's no shortage of people who want to talk about it and write about it and and help us understand the human condition better and that's why we have books like my Germany Lev Raphael, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it. It was time, great sir. being here. Thanks. And website levraphael.com if you want to find out more information. You can look for the book, My Germany, wherever great books are sold. Thanks again for sticking around. We've got more coming up.